Uh, okay, mm -hmm. so so we are live uh, today with Mateusz Piskorski. Mateusz Piskorski was a leader of the party Zmiana. It is the change in English language. And he was a Polish political prisoner uh, in 2016 uh, to uh, until 2019. In every capitalist country, we can find people like Mubia Amu Jamal in USA, the, Julian Assange, Great Britain, Pablo Hassel in Spain, or George Ibrahim Abdallah uh, in France. And we will speak about this uh, subject because uh, I think that the people from the Western countries have to know what is the reality in Poland. So, Mateusz, could you say something, uh, firstly, about your party? Why your party, Partia Zmiana, uh, was uh, the name of this party? It is first non-American party uh, in Poland. Could you present a little bit uh, Polish political system and why you have problem with re registration and uh, this, you know... Uh, thank you. Hello, Michal, and uh, hello, all comrades and friends out there. Uh, so, when it comes to the Polish political system, I think uh, you have uh, one of your guests, of your frequent guests here, uh, our friend and comrade uh, Bruno Drwenski, uh, who perfectly describes this system because he's uh, taking us into the roots of this system. He has lately published a book about the Solidarity Movement, which is uh, worldwide known uh, as a kind of, uh, well, let's say a paradox and uh, absurd, because it was a trade union fighting against uh, the Polish People's Republic, which means fighting against a socialist state, which is quite weird uh, as for the standards of, uh, uh, let's say, Western uh, world or Western Europe, at least. Uh, the roots of this system, as uh, Bruno describes, uh, are deeply uh, into the, let's say, plans of color revolutions in the Eastern Bloc countries, uh, orchestrated by uh, the American, mainly the American, but not only the American uh, intelligence, orchestrated by those uh, forces, those powers of uh, neoliberal and uh, neoconservative character, who is striving to uh, demolish uh, the economies of the former Eastern Bloc countries. So the paradox about solidarity is a kind of uh, founding stone of uh, the whole political system. I mean, at, at almost all uh, political parties, uh, including the two biggest political parties in Poland, which is uh, the Civic Platform, the neoliberal one, and uh, law and, ju and justice, the party which is which is governing our country now, a neoconservative party, are uh, parties which uh, have been created by the people of the former solidarity, which means that uh, they have common roots, that uh, they have also, let's say, uh, the common uh, protectors abroad and uh, common sponsors abroad as well. Uh, mainly, of course, uh, this is connected to the so-called uh, Washington Consensus, which was a kind of uh, neoliberal strategy for all uh, developing countries. It was not only actually for <clears throat> uh, designed not only for Central Europe, but uh, originally it uh, had been designed uh, by some neoliberal uh, economists uh, from United States for uh, Latin American countries. Uh, you know, this was. Uh, more or less uh, kind of uh, inspiration for several uh, military neoconservative or extreme right-wing uh, coup d'etats in uh, several uh, Latin and South American countries before. It was a kind of, uh, let's say, uh, agenda, an economic agenda for those countries. And the same agenda was uh, actually uh, uh, implemented in uh, Central and uh, Eastern European countries after the fall of the so-called uh, Eastern Bloc. The same was going for Poland. I mean, uh, when it comes to Poland, uh, you had the people, the elites of uh, the Solidarity Movement, which started as a workers' movement, actually, in 1918. But then it was kidnapped, I would say, and uh, controlled by uh, different people with different backgrounds, but almost all of them connected somehow to the West, to the uh, neoliberal circles in the West. 
So those people were creating our political system. Those people uh, practically eliminated all the left-wing uh, ideas from our system. Uh, Poland is one of the very, very few countries in Europe, actually, where we have uh, no socialist par party in the parliament. I mean, we have a, the so-called social democrats, uh, but they are more or less uh, neoliberal as well. So uh, there is a consensus, a Washington consensus, when it comes to the economic issues, to the issues of economic policy in Poland. On the level of parliament, we had only a few people uh, during all those years after 1989. So uh, in, uh, in uh, over 30 years, we had uh, just a few people who uh, were really devoted to the socialist ideas and they became the members of parliament by coincidence like uh, Piotr Ikonowicz, who, who is a real socialist in my opinion, but nevertheless he uh, he went, uh, he was uh, elected to the parliament uh, when uh, they uh, had a deal, his small party, uh, the Polish po uh, Socialist Party, had a deal with uh, the big social democratic post-communist party, which was actually uh, neolib neoliberal, so uh, it was just tactics that enabled Ikonowicz and some of his friends to become the members of parliament. Then we had a party uh, which was not socialist, I would say, or it was not purely socialist, but it was a kind of, uh, you know, popular protest party. Uh, of course, uh, when it comes to the economic issues, it was more or less left. And it was the self-defense party. I was the member of parliament uh, on behalf of, the, of, of this party, the leader of the party, uh, Andrzej Leper, uh, very, very well known in Poland as a kind of, uh, you know, leader of agrarian protests, of farmers' protests, someone like, uh, let's say, uh, Jose Bové, in, in his beginnings, of course, not now when, when he's a green uh, establishment politician, but in the beginnings of uh, uh, the Peasants' Confederation and Jose Bové in France, let's say that Andrzej Lepe was uh, someone who might remind uh, the activities, the radical activities of uh, the Peasants' Confederation in uh, France in the 90s. Nevertheless, uh, Lepe entered the parliament, talked uh, uh, honestly about what is going on in our country when it comes to privatization, the neoliberal devastation of our economy, and also the uh, subjugation of our politics, uh, first and foremost foreign policy, uh, to United States. So he was the first one to talk about the secret prisons run by CIA on the territory of Poland and so on. Uh, of course, uh, because of that and because of the fact that he was uh, from, let's say, outside of the establishment, he was not the member of the establishment, ruling uh, of the ruling class, which was in control in Poland after 1989. Uh, he was uh, soon, uh, let's say, eliminated from the political scene, which means politically eliminated. And then uh, very soon after he uh, was not elected to the parliament in 2007, after four years of striving uh, in a kind of extra parliamentary um, uh, opposition, uh, he was probably killed. I mean, uh, a lot of people think that he was killed and there are some clues and evidence that uh, could really, uh, let's say, show that uh, actually he was killed out of the official version, the official explanation is that he committed suicide. So this is also something which might tell you a lot about the Polish politics. A guy who was a popular leader, who was one of the very, very few charismatic leaders of the left-wing movement, of a popular movement, of a protest movement, was probably killed in our country for the things he was talking about, for, for the things he knew about, and so on. So uh, this is uh, a lot, this might tell us a lot about the democracy, in brackets of course, uh, which is uh, functioning in Poland after 1989. After the, you asked about the change party, so after the, the death of uh, Andrzej Leper, who was my inspiration and uh, my leader for, uh, lot of years until 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 his death uh, I was in, in touch with him and we cooperated and I, I really hoped that he might become again a kind of uh, leader of a popular protest in Poland. Uh, I uh, was more into let's say the analytical 
activities uh, into the observation of uh, referendums of uh, elections as a political scientist. So I was uh, more or less active uh, in different countries. It was the uh, post-Soviet uh, area countries. It was uh, the Middle East as well. We were monitoring different processes like, you know, the so-called Arab Spring, for instance. Uh, we were monitoring what was going on in uh, Ukraine when the country was uh, devastated in 2014 by the neo-nazi uh, neo-nazis controlled by by the us and uh, uh, within a coup orchestrated by the us actually in ukraine as we all remember so after a lot of my visits in different countries i became a frequent guest uh, in different parts of our country of poland in different even small towns people were gathering and asking me to come to tell them something about for instance, Crimea, for instance, Donbass, for instance, uh, Libya, Syria, and uh, other countries I have visited uh, during the turmoils uh, at that time. And uh, we were talking about the foreign policy of Poland as well. So after every uh, such a meeting, when, uh, when I met people who were just coming to listen to what I have uh, uh, observed and what I have seen in, in different countries, uh, we were having a coffee or a beer and those people were telling me that, well, we, we really need a new political force, a new political party, which would be not a, a pro-American, not anti-American as well, but non-American political force in Poland, which means not controlled by the US and the uh, US embassy in Warsaw. So uh, that was the idea. And uh, it was actually those people who inspired me to, to say, yes, uh, we should create a kind of a new political party. But as one guy told me uh, a little bit later, uh, when we uh, encountered the first serious problems uh, with the organization of the party, well, he told me that uh, it is the American embassy in this country who gives uh, the permi permits and concessions for different people to establish political parties. So he was uh, telling me, trying to explain me that if I don't have the permission from the US embassy in Warsaw or from some people who are connected to, uh, with the uh, US embassy in Warsaw, I cannot establish a political party. And that's why very soon we uh, encountered severe uh, problems with uh, the registration of the party. I mean, the courts, of course, it's, uh, it's a myth that the court, courts are independent. The courts uh, were trying to reject the signatures we have presented to, to uh, register a political party. Uh, we have encountered several organizational problems, several provocations also within uh, the party. I mean, of course, the secret services were uh, trying to, to disrupt the activities of our party for, as, uh, from within, not only from outside, but from within as well. So, uh, well, uh, uh, we were just uh, a few hundreds of people here in Poland gathered in, in the change party who were fighting the huge state apparatus, actually all the uh, state apparatus was uh, more or less uh, engaged into fighting uh, the idea of, of the establishment of such a political party. And actually, yes, uh, in uh, 2016, regardless the fact that uh, the party was not officially registered yet at that time, we were still fighting in the court, we were trying to organize uh, you know, a kind of uh, pan-European or even international uh, events uh, during the NATO summit in Warsaw, which uh, was scheduled for July 2016. And uh, we invited a lot of guests. Uh, we planned to organize several conferences, not only meetings, not only uh, demonstrations, but also conferences there. And uh, of course, the summit as such was of strategic importance uh, for um, the Polish authorities controlled by the US. And, uh, well, uh, they decided on May 2016 to arrest me on, charge, on charges of espionage. On charges of espionage, they couldn't decide <coughs> for whom I was spying, actually. But they used the argument that I was traveling, traveling a lot to uh, Russia, of course, which is presented as, a, as an enemy of NATO and, uh, let's say, a mortal enemy of, of Poland as well by, by, by the regime here. And that's why I was detained and uh, then arrested on charges of uh, spying uh, uh, for Russia, for Russian uh, secret services and the intelligence. But the funny no, thing no, is, you know... Firstly, they said that you are spying for Iraq. 
You know that was that was very funny because I have never been I have never been to Iraq. Uh, I have been several times to Iran, and uh, I think that they have uh, made a mistake. It's just one letter, you know, when it comes to the difference between the names of those countries. So they are stupid enough to to make a mistake and to to um, write Iraq when uh, actually they were thinking about. Uh, uh, Iran, because uh, really I had a lot of friends and I still have a lot of friends in uh, Iran among um, uh, different people, uh, political scientists and politicians there. Anyway, uh, so, uh, well, they, they tried to accuse me, of course, of several uh, different suspicious ties all over the world because I was traveling a lot and uh, as you understand and as uh, my comrades and friends might know I was traveling mainly to those countries which were trying to uh, perceive and protect uh, their independence from the US and the Atlantic um, system uh, from NATO and so on so it was uh, countries like you know uh, Syria or Bashar al-Assad uh, uh, countries like uh, Belarus of Alexander Lukashenko, uh, Russia, of course, China as well. So uh, I was traveling a lot and particularly to such countries, which was, of course, uh, a reason for suspicions from uh, the Polish secret services. And uh, well, actually, what is the most intense, interesting thing here? Yes, if you hear about espionage, the first thing which comes to, uh, to your mind is that uh, espionage is, uh, uh, let's say, collecting and transferring uh, some secret data, some secret information from one country to another, yes? Uh, this is the uh, actually the thing the intel intelligence, the foreign intelligence does. Uh, it has to co uh, collect the information, uh, of course, classified or secret information and so on. So. Uh, I want to to uh, to tell to everyone that I was never charged with collecting or passing any kind of secret or classified information. Uh, well, I, even if I would like to do that, it was impossible for me because, uh, as one of the anti-system anti-system activists in Poland, I hadn't such an access to any kind of such an information. So, uh, actually, I was charged with. Uh, uh, the thing which they have officially called, you might read about it in, in the official announcements of the General Prosecutor's Office in uh, Poland, of trying to influence the public opinion in Poland, which is a crime, as you see. So, uh, if you uh, have any foreign uh, contacts and your relations uh, outside the country, and if you voice uh, independent views or alternative views, not corresponding to the policy of uh, the existing regime in Poland, you might be uh, charged with uh, espionage here. So this is the reality in Poland. By the way, you know <laughs> yourself the, uh, let's say, intellectual level of the um, uh, Polish uh, political police, uh, which is called uh, Internal security agency which which has also lately detained you as well yes so so i think we have some uh, common experience with those guys uh, nevertheless they are uh, trying to do their best to uh, let's say first first of all to frighten everyone because uh, if uh, a lot of people who are looking at my fate when i was kept for three years or almost three years without two days uh, in uh, in prison in detention i was arrested for such a long period uh, people were looking at my case and thinking well perhaps it's quite uh, or it's too dangerous to to, to engage in any kind of uh, uh, real oppositional activity here in uh, in poland and i think that they have achieved the the goal yes because uh, they have disintegrated a lot of uh, uh, groups, a lot of uh, structures which were uh, functioning at that time, uh, just showing them my example, yes? So this was quite uh, interesting and uh, I think that actually they had the same aim when they were trying to, to do all this show with uh, detaining you uh, this year, yes? Uh, I think it was quite similar, they wanted to show all uh, the people who are close to the communist movement, uh, to the real left movement, uh, that well, uh, you might you might have problems like Michal had, yes. So 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 uh, the main idea of this regime is to threaten you, to make you afraid of any kind of political activity, uh, 
And well, the, uh, of course, they are also um, uh, taking uh, taking uh, the guys like me to become the political prisoners. We had another political prisoner right now. It's uh, Janusz Niedźwiecki, another guy who is uh, since half a year he, he had been arrested half a year ago, and uh, he's still still there in jail, and we have no information about him. But he's also charged with. Uh, some things like uh, you know uh, influencing public opinion as they uh, express that mm, uh, and uh, we have also because you have started uh, with poland but i would like to stress here that i have a lot of friends maybe in the west uh, in western europe uh, well people haven't heard about those guys those people uh, because the west is focused on on the tragic fate on the tragic fate of uh, julian assange you have mentioned of course, this is the most important political prisoner uh, in the world, I think, now. Uh, but uh, we have also a lot of political prisoners in the countries uh, who even do not pretend that they are democratic. They are autocratic uh, regimes in uh, uh, Eastern and Central Europe. It's not only Poland. I'd like to mention here as well uh, countries like uh, Lithuania, where uh, my friend Algirdas Paleckis, the leader of Socialist Popular Front, had been arrested for one and a half a year and now he has been uh, convicted for six years of prison for expressing his views about uh, the events of uh, January 1991 in Vilnius, where, as, as you remember, the Soviet army uh, confronted the nationalists, the Lithuanian nationalists. So he was just trying to find out the truth about uh, about uh, those events and for that he he had uh, um, a six year sentence can you imagine that and he's a socialist uh, so uh, on the other hand you have people like uh, alexander gaponienko in uh, latvia who was also who is an elderly professor a russian speaking minority member in uh, latvia and who also spent over a, a year in prison you have uh, uh, my friend sergey seredenko from estonia who is still sitting in jail just for having some contacts and uh, exchanging some emails with the Russians <coughs> uh, who are uh, anti-fascists anti -fascists like him because he organized protests against uh, uh, the um, uh, commemorations of Waffen-SS uh, uh, veterans there in, uh, in Estonia, in Tallinn. So we have a lot of people like that, you know. I'm not even speaking about Ukraine, because in Ukraine it's quite obvious that there is a fascist, openly fascist regime uh, who is detaining, arresting and even killing people there, yes. But this is another issue. There is uh, officially a kind of civil war there. But we speak about European Union countries. We speak about Poland, we speak about uh, Lithuania, Latvia, Estonia. Uh, in Bulgaria lately there was also such a case. So uh, we have a wave of authoritarianism in uh, uh, Central and European, Central and Eastern European countries, and uh, when the guys from uh, the liberal parties, from uh, the mainstream European parties, are discussing about, uh, uh, let's say, the state of rule of law in Poland, the state of rule of law in other uh, countries of our part of Europe, of course they do not mention me or you or uh, several other of our friends uh, from our region. Uh, and they don't, they are not uh, talking about the repressions against us. They are talking and, you know, uh, almost crying over the fate of some uh, people who demonstrated somewhere and were detained just for a few hours by the police. Yes, of course, it's uh, uh, important to condemn the police as well. Yes, but uh, I think that when it comes to the real repressions against uh, several people in, uh, in our countries, uh, well, the world is silent almost completely silent uh, I, I mean in uh, i have mentioned european parliament and uh, in european parliament uh, i think that there are just a few members of european parliament interested in the fate of uh, the political prisoners in uh, our part of europe it's uh, tatiana Zdanoka from the uh, russian alliance from latvia uh, as she knows the fate of her compatriots and uh, she perfectly tries to um, at least uh, say something about their fate in European Parliament. And it's uh, Claire Daly and uh, her uh, 
um, party comrades uh, from uh, Ireland, from uh, from the left, from the European left, yes, which are also uh, very active when it comes to Julian Assange and the issues of, of, of helping Julian Assange, but they are also helping the prisoners, political prisoners in, uh, in uh, Central European countries. Uh, all the others, well, they say nothing, although they uh, theoretically could use, for instance, during the debates about Poland, they could use the cases of people imprisoned here for uh, political reasons, but they are not doing that because the mainstream parties actually support or at least uh, keep total silent uh, about uh, the fate of real opposition, because for the very simple reason, they are supporting the neoliberal regime here as well. So uh, it was just a few words of introduction about what is what, what is happening on the you know. Yes, so I, I would like to make one comment uh, to the viewers from um, other countries which don't know the political scene. Uh, you mentioned two parties, Law and Justice and uh, Civic Platform. But I would like also to say that, the, in my opinion, uh, the Polish social democracy is uh, uh, also the pro-American party in the same level like law and justice or uh, maybe more. The example is the uh, the time of 2001-2005. It was when the, the time when the social democrat government and president, they sent Polish troops to Afghanistan, to Iraq, and also they decided that in Poland there will be the secret prison of the CIA. Um, uh, of course, Michal, I agree. Just, just, just to uh, tell a few words about that. You know, I was once uh, speaking to then Prime Minister uh, Leszek Miller from the Social Democratic uh, Left, or, or I mean, he was a neoliberal, not a left, uh, of course, uh, politician. Nevertheless, he told me uh, privately that uh, they had to be even more pro-American than the post-solidarity parties to prove that they are able and that that, 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 can, that they can get a concession, a permission to rule the country. So this is the system. I mean, uh, uh, it, is, it is a paradox, yes, because in, uh, in France at that time, you mentioned Iraq and Afghanistan. In uh, France, uh, a right-wing president, a Gaullist president, Jacques Chirac, was criticizing the Polish social democratic uh, government for sending the troops of Poland for intervening in Iraq, for instance. The same was with uh, Schroeder, the social democratic, very neoliberal as well, when it comes to economy. Uh, Chancellor uh, Gerhard Schroeder, who, who also criticized the uh, Polish uh, social democrats at that time for uh, supporting everything the America has asked, the Americans ha have asked for, yes. So uh, you are right. I mean, the, this is a paradox of, of Polish political sense. We have no left. We have, uh, uh, from the economic point of view, the Polish Social Democrats, also those who are represented in the parliament now, are totally 100% neoliberal because they are supporting uh, practically the, the economic system which is existing now, yes. Uh, from the point of view of foreign policy, uh, they are, let's say, 100% pro-US and pro-Atlanticist. And uh, the only thing which makes them different from a uh, civic platform or uh, particularly from uh, law and justice are the things of LGBT rights and so on. Yes. So this is the only thing uh, which, uh, uh, let's say, lets them to call themselves left wing. But it, it, you know that it's not left wing. I mean, speaking about uh, the minority rights is, might, be, might be important sometimes. Yes. But nevertheless, uh, this is not the the core issue for the left wing, or it shouldn't be at least. Yes, and I would like also say something about the similarities of our cases. Of course, uh, your case is much more uh, serious than mine. Uh, I was uh, detained only four hours. You were in the prison three years, so. I can uh, have the can have competition with you, but of course the future maybe uh, show. Uh, we don't know what future will come. But in the day when I was arrested, uh, I was arrested because of two things: because I was uh, make a song, a par parodic song about one monument in Poland, and also I was uh, I was. Uh, uh, accused, accused that I promote the uh, 
totalitarian socialist society. Okay, we can agree with uh, that things which I do done is good or not, but there are two cases, uh, socialism and monument. Uh, in the 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 um, guy from the ABV uh, Jaren, he sent information that I was arrested because I am a terrorist who wants to kill the Polish soldiers. And this information was spread in this day in all Polish media, especially in the Wiadomości, in the, the biggest uh, public television information in, in the prime time. Uh, there was my, my photo, of course, a photo of my mother, uh, and information that I was arrested because I want to kill the Polish Polish soldiers. Uh, so totally lying propaganda and your case is similar when you were uh, uh, when you were arrested um, and the all the medias uh, uh, of course uh, these medias are the same but uh, the is why we have to speak about Piskorski? He's a spy. It's normal. If uh, if if they arrest him, uh, uh, they know something. They know something, and it was all this atmosphere. They the, they they your your case was secret, so uh, nobody can say nothing because uh, as uh, Abevu, uh, it's sure that they know something, and uh, it will be not possible in Poland to arrest somebody for three years without uh, without uh, proof uh, so uh, the the um, so uh, it's not only the uh, police politic who have uh, who have made a very bad job but also the polish uh, polish journalist and also all the politician in Poland who who was silent about that who, or they supported publicly this this situation, uh, and also these uh, all these defenders of the uh, I don't know Amnesty International. They were silent and nothing. Uh, so, could you let me let me comment comment me a few words uh, about that uh, because it's very important. I mean, one of the most fundamental rights of all, all of us, yes, is the right is the right to defend ourselves. Uh, in a framework of uh, guaranteed by constitution and uh, other acts of international law of a public process, yes? So all the trials according to the Polish constitution and according also to the European uh, Convention of Human Rights should be public. Uh, we both know uh, a very well-known Russian journalist, Leonid Sviridov, who uh, lived here in Poland for several years or 15 years or 16 years, I don't remember. And uh, suddenly he was uh, deported from, expelled from Poland uh, because uh, the ABW, the Polish secret police, uh, argued that he had some, that he, uh, let's say, imposed a threat for the national security of Poland. This was uh, uh, the quotation from the documents uh, revealed officially, yes? And this was the only quotation of official documents. When Leonid uh, tried to appeal uh, and, uh, well, to, to, to find out what's going on, what are the charges against him and so on, what, are, what is the evidence against him, yes? Uh, he got nothing. So there is even not right for appeal for several people because they know nothing. They just get a uh, simple information that, well, we are concerning your activities like a threat for national security. This is the, the securitization, it's even called now, uh, securitization of uh, the internal policy and of judiciary system in uh, Central European countries. But not only here, of course, uh, it came to us from the US after 11 September 2001. So uh, it's quite similar to the Patriot Act and, and the practices of uh, uh, the US uh, against its own citizens and against the citizens of other countries. The fundamental law of each of us is uh, the right of, of each of us is, as I, I told uh, already, is uh, the right for the public trial, yes? Because, uh, well, I asked, I personally, I'll tell you about my case, 
I personally asked the court, the prosecutor, to reveal all the information about uh, my case several times. You know, the answer was like, uh, we cannot do that because it might be harmful for the, for the image of the Polish uh, system of law and uh, law enforcement, yes? So this was the official answer. So they perfectly understand that if they would reveal all the things and details about the charges against me, uh, it could uh, be really a kind of, uh, you know, image catastrophe for them. Uh, it's so absurd. I can only give you a few of examples. Unfortunately, I cannot speak about all of them. Nevertheless, I'm, for instance, I'm charged, you know, one of the charges is that I made a photo with uh, <coughs> uh, Alexander Zaharchenko, who was uh, the head of uh, Donetsk People's Republic and uh, published this photo in uh, Facebook and other social media. And uh, because of that, they are charging me that I was promoting the so-called separatists, pro-Russian separatists from uh, Donbass and so on, yes? So this, uh, I mean, this is real. I would not believe that if, if, if I wouldn't have read the charges against me, yes? But uh, this is the level of the charges. The same was about you, Eben, about your detention, yes? This is their level. Uh, that's why they want to keep everything, everything secret. Uh, the same goes for several other issues and court cases uh, in Poland. Uh, so, uh, and if you don't have the public control, the control of the opposition journalists, yes, we, we have some very weak, but nevertheless, uh, alternative media, I think that uh, uh, also... Uh, if my if my trial would be open, you would also come. I, I would invite you, and you could uh, record something and uh, and uh, talk about it openly. And a lot of people all over the world would would, would hear about uh, the real face of the regime here in Poland. So, I think uh, this is the most important aspects of all this thing. I mean, to to fight to fight for the transparency of uh, the judiciary and uh, court system and uh, how they work here. Yes. Uh, I'm going to fight for that. Uh, I just wanted to announce it here um, to you and, and, and the, the comrades who are listening and watching us. Uh, I'm going to fight for that. I'm going to, to appeal even to the Human Rights Court in Strasbourg to make all the documents being revealed, uh, or at least a uh, um, large part of the documents on my case being revealed to the public uh, so that the people themselves could... Uh, uh see and try to understand the uh, practices of the polish regime but it's very funny uh, what you said about uh, this photo with zaharchenko because um, who was the leonid Sviridov? what he, did he do in, in in poland he was a journalist who in these uh, 15 years when he was living in poland he have made in the interview with every Polish prime minister, every Polish president, the most important Polish politician. He has a lot of photo with the famous Polish politicians. So if the photo with somebody is uh, a proof that somebody is a spy, that all the Polish politicians is the spy of the spirit of Russia, or I don't know. Um, I would like to say some words about this uh, crazy uh, situation in Poland after the Crimea referendum, because uh, uh, the, the case of the, uh, Leonid Sviridov, he was uh, he, uh, he organized the public meetings where he shown the photo of dead people, dead, dead uh, children in, in Donetsk in the time of the bombardment by the uh, Ukrainian army. Uh, and uh, it, it was dead. It was dead that because he, he wanted to show information that in the Donbass people are dying, uh, and uh, he, he 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 wanted to make world to know that that it is a humanitarian catastrophe. He was uh, designed like an enemy of the state. Uh, the um, and 
uh, and uh, it was a very crazy time in Poland because in in one case we have all this r Russophobia which was always in Poland but in this time was uh, uh, this Rufos Russophobia was growing and also it was a time I think that it was 2016 when uh, Polish government invited to Poland the US Army and US Army since uh, 2016 have military bases in Poland. Uh, your party was, uh, I think, the only one who organized the protest against this uh, this uh, military basis, the occupation, because we have to use the proper word. The, if we have uh, uh, soldiers from imperialist country in other country, uh, it's a co occupation, and um, and uh, uh, it it was um, it was a time when. Um, Siridov was uh, have problem after you, and um, what else? Uh, maybe you have comment for this. Well, uh, this was uh, <clears throat> well. Let's say it was the main charge against me, uh, actually, and and we can already talk about that. It's uh, the main charge against me was that I was coordinating a group of international observers at the Crimea referendum on the 16th of March uh, 2014. Uh, the main charge of, uh, against, I mean, the main reason of uh, expelling uh, Leonid Spirido from Poland was uh, probably, as you told, I mean, we don't know it officially because everything is secret. And uh, nevertheless, uh, probably uh, it was uh, caused more or less by the fact that he uh, really made this exhibition. It was during uh, the OSC summit in, in Warsaw. And uh, he was just trying to show the photos made by one of the reporters which were uh, shot that, were shot, who were shot that in uh, Donbass. It was just a kind of, uh, you know, memory exhibition of a photographer, of a reporter of Russian media who was killed in, uh, in Donbass before. And uh, he made great photos, and uh, the photos depicted all these tragic uh, pictures from 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 the war. Yes, from the war. So um, uh, actually, the Ukrainian topic was so important, as it seems, for everyone uh, that uh, well, actually, almost all of the um, things they 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 were charging me with. Uh, were somehow more or less connected to Ukraine. Uh, I mean, this was the main topic after 2014, after what has happened in Kiev. I think this is actually another topic for a lengthy discussion between us. Uh, very interesting, by the way. Uh, but nevertheless, I think that, uh, let's say, the confrontation and us, um, uh, uh, very respected by me, uh, scholar and professor, uh, Kes van der Peel from uh, the Netherlands states. Uh, it was the beginning of uh, the new Cold War, yes? So we are now witnessing the new Cold War. I mean, uh, in 2014. So when uh, when the West, uh, the Americans, uh, first and foremost, failed to take uh, control over the whole Ukraine, they were so furious about that, that they were starting to, uh, you know, press all their allies uh, uh, all around, uh, particularly in Europe, uh, pushing them to persecute all the people who presented alternative point of view on, on the Ukrainian issues, on the issues of Donbass, of Crimea. So this was the, uh, let's say, most dangerous topic at that time for, for any kind of opposition activists. I mean, it, it is still like that. If you, if you are talking about the fascists in uh, Ukraine, if you are fighting uh, the neo-Nazis and nationalists in uh, Ukraine, you might be arrested not only in Ukraine, but uh, actually you might be also, uh, let's say, prosecuted and at least repressed in, in Poland. I mean, it's a paradox. Uh, our government, uh, our, uh, let's say, political police and secret uh, services are chasing and repressing the people who are fighting the um, Ukrainian nationalists and neo-Nazis and uh, just for some of our uh, listeners and uh, viewers to, 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 to remember uh, during the Second World War those uh, Ukrainian nationalists were collaborating with the Third Reich 
and they have killed around 100,000 Polish people there in the territories of uh, today's Ukraine, yes, as well as, as the Jews, as well as the, the Russians uh, and Ukrainians themselves who are not sharing their views. So this is a kind of, you know, a kind of uh, tradition which is uh, adhering and even praising the genocide of uh, ethnic minorities. And uh, uh, imagine uh, when it comes to Ukraine, and uh, I won't, won't go very deep into this topic, but nevertheless, imagine, for instance, in Germany, if it would be possible to build a statue, to raise a statue for, I don't know, Heinrich Himmler, for instance, the head of SS, yes? And in Ukraine, it's possible to raise the statues, uh, to uh, raise the monuments of uh, Stepan Bandera the leader of uh, Ukrainian Nazi collaborators uh, from the times of the Second World War. So, uh, uh, I mean, we have a, a US-supported uh, neo-Nazi state, uh, which was created in 2014 there, and uh, all the members of anti-fascist movements, all the members of, uh, I mean, all the people who are criticizing uh, the, fact, uh, the facts uh, which were happening at that time in Ukraine were prosecuted, uh, some of them arrested, some of, of them just repressed all over Europe, particularly in countries like Poland. But not only, it uh, concerns also um, uh, the, the other Central European countries I have already mentioned. So, um, the, the thing that in the all Eastern Europe there are the monuments of the fascists, it's, I think that the people in the Western countries, they knew but the situation, the very strange relation between Poland and Ukraine, that uh, that you are arrested because of Ukraine, Leonid Sviridiv was arrested because of Ukraine, so the, there are very close ties in the time when the Ukraine are building monuments for the people who are responsible for killing Poles. And it is something which nobody in Poland can understand how it is happened because Poland give money for Ukraine. Poland defend Ukraine in the international, uh, international. I don't know, in Euro European Union, in NATO, in everywhere. Uh, and in the same time, uh, the Ukraine builds the, these, these monuments and they, they don't want to stop. Uh, also, they make a law forbidden the, the education of the minorities language in Ukraine, also Polish language. So they have, they, they make the anti-Polish politic internal in, in, in Ukraine and Poland, Polish government, Polish government say, say nothing about this. Why? Of course, because uh, it is not because the, the, the Polish politicians uh, are not conscious of, of the situation. It is because the, the decision, uh, the most important uh, decision to the uh, foreigner politic of Poland, it's made by the uh, US ambassade. And they decided you have to defend Ukraine because Ukraine and Poland and USA are together against Russia. So you have to forget it, uh, that they, they build the monuments for people who killed Poles. Uh, you don't have right to criticize them publicly because the main enemy is Russia. The main uh, fundament of uh, the Polish uh, foreign policy, uh, but also the Polish defense policy, uh, is uh, the phobia of Russian aggression. So uh, Poland is building all, I mean, all the um, uh, legitimization, legitimacy of this uh, establishment ruling Poland, uh, well, has, uh, let's say, three, fund three fundamentals. Yes? First, first one is, uh, of course, the capitalism and they are defending more more or less in different ways they are defending the capitalist system the existing uh, system when it comes to its economic and social basis and uh, the distribution of property second is of course uh, the hate of uh, russia and everything which is uh, let's say non-western or alternative to us and third thing is a kind of uh, 
extreme uh, loyalty to all uh, all the political circles and political players who are more or less anti-Russian. It is a lengthy process. Uh, you probably know about uh, the publications already from the 90s. Yes, something something was uh, was broken in Poland in the 90s. I mean, a kind of mental barrier has been broken at that time. There was one uh, Warsaw Univers University professor, a historian, uh, Paweł uh, Wieczorkiewicz, who uh, has published back then uh, books suggesting that Poland should be cooperating during the Second World War with the Third Reich against the Soviet Union. So this was something completely new. I mean, no one, no one in Poland all over those years, yes, after the Second World War, uh, had even thought about such things before. But in the 90s, it began. Yeah? So uh, we have a lengthy process, and now there are a lot of books published in Poland that Poland really would, would get a lot of advantages uh, building the Third Reich with uh, Adolf Hitler and taking Moscow and so on, yes? So um, this is... Uh, I mean, this um, uh, the possibility, the possibility to praise the Ukrainian neo Nazis uh, to become friends with them. Uh, for instance, the deputy speaker of the Polish Parliament, uh, Małgorzata Gosiewska from the Law and Justice Party, from the governing party, she is meeting the neo Nazis from Azov Battalion, from uh, other groups who are openly neo Nazi. Just for you to understand that, I mean, for for our viewers, you know about this. It is, but but well, uh, the, the when in the 2013 or 14, Kaczynski was in the same scene like the leader of the party Svoboda. They were Jagibor, together. Yes, exactly, exactly. So they were all uh, they were all praising and legitimizing the neo Nazis, the extreme nationalist movements in in Ukraine. Of course, this is something which might be un unbelievable, yes, but it's happening. And uh, uh, when it comes to the fact that uh, they don't care about the fate of uh, Polish minority there, uh, the same goes, by the way, the same goes for Lithuania. Uh, particularly the Law and Justice Party is blind when it comes to the laws and uh, the issues of discrimination of Polish minority in different countries as uh, long as those countries are anti-Russian, yes? So uh, they forget about everything. The only important thing is that the country is some kind of uh, ally in a, a potential uh, imag imagined, because it's not real now, but it's their fantasy, a kind of uh, new axis against uh, Russia. Yes? So, so this is the only criteria for a lot of politicians here. You have mentioned the Ukrainians. Uh, actually, now it's very interesting because, uh, you know, just a few days ago, uh, Deputy Minister, Minister of Foreign Affairs of Poland, uh, Szymon uh, Szynkowski Welsenk, announced that uh, actually there is a kind of discrimination of Polish minority in Ukraine. And of course, immediately, a uh, wave of criticism uh, rose in Kiev, and he was already condemned by uh, the spokesman of, of the Ukrainian Foreign Ministry. And now, uh, why, why is it interesting? Because uh, now I'm uh, just... Uh, uh, trying to, to even to bet with some of, of my friends, yes. Uh, and I really think that Szynkowski Versenk will soon, uh, very soon lose his governmental position, yes, for voicing such, op such an opinion, probably, yes, uh, unfortunately. Uh, um, nevertheless, I mean, he told uh, a few words of, of, of true about the uh, situation of minorities, of ethnic and national minorities in Ukraine, and probably he will be dismissed for that. Uh, let's see, but anyway, uh, so uh, yes, uh, the Polish uh, policy, I mean, it's kind of a madness because some kind, sometimes, you know, Michal, I sometimes get an impression that a lot of uh, establishment uh, politicians here uh, really regret that Poland hasn't joined Adolf Hitler and the Third Reich during the uh, Second World War. They re really regret that. And uh, I see that uh, they, they are envy when they meet their, uh, you know, neo-Nazi or extreme nationalist friends uh, in uh, Ukraine, in Lithuania, in Estonia, in Latvia, they are really envy, so envy when they look that those guys had their uh, grandfathers in uh, Waffen-SS 
and uh, and the Polish people don't have such 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 an experience. Yes, so uh, it's an absurd. Poland as a, uh, one of the very very few countries who uh, hadn't had uh, any kind of uh, institutionalized because they were single cases of course yes but institutionalized uh, military cooperation in the third reich uh, besides of course the the um, national military forces the świętokrzyskie brigade who, who cooperated with the with the germans uh, at the end of the second world war nevertheless compared to the Ukrainians, compared to the Estonians, to the Latvians and so on, uh, we have uh, not so much, uh, let's say, black holes uh, or shameful moments in our history during the Second World War. Nevertheless, the Polish political light, the Polish ruling class, seems that they would dream of having such black uh, holes and uh, shameful moments in our own history, because for them it's not shameful. For them, the main goal is to destroy Soviet Union at that time. Soviet Union now it's is to destroy Russia, China, or all other countries which they perceive as uh, their opponents in this era of the new Cold War. So I think that this example of this uh, Velsenk, or how is named, that uh, it, the, we have a little different situation in Poland now than in 2016. This is a different situation because of Joe Biden and because the relation Poland and USA, especially in late uh, weeks, are not very good. Uh, we have example of the uh, this American television TVN and uh, Biden publicly uh, critiqued the Polish government. He they said uh, that there will be possible the sanction against the Polish Prime Minister Kaczyński. So now these people who have to be silent many years, uh, they can say something. Uh, before it was forbidden. Now it is a little... Uh, uh, but of course, uh, the the big criti uh, critique of the uh, all the USA or the USA ally allies, of course, it's not possible, but it's something uh, the it's something changed also the relation polish with china is changed but we are rhyme of time uh, i want to ask you one question very important what is your situation today because i think that many people will when they watch this video they will ask what is your situation today so could you, for example, go to Paris tomorrow and uh, meet with me and uh, and stuff like this? I cannot uh, travel uh, anywhere abroad. Uh, well, when I asked for such a possibility, because I'm still, um, uh, you know, the trial is theoretically going on, although the court is uh, organizing just a few sittings uh, per year so nothing is going on actually and from the from the judicial judicial point of view on the other hand i'm still deprived of the possibility of traveling which is uh, well uh, very hard for me because uh, of course i have a lot of comrades and friends all, all around uh, in different countries but also because it's very, believe me, that it's very hard to find a job in Poland when you are, uh, when you are presented by the government media as a Russian spy and so on. Yes, yeah? so so it's not so easy. Uh, nevertheless, I think uh, I think that their goal now is to force me to leave the country. Yes, actually to to, to make it illegal. Yes, because if I would. Uh, let's say violate uh, the uh, ban for traveling abroad, they would at once uh, uh, claim that I have escaped. And if I'm es I, I have escaped, it means that I'm guilty, yes? So I'm escaping, hiding myself somewhere and so on. So this is the thing they want to achieve, in my opinion. Uh, they are uh, in, in uh, May 2019, uh, I went out of uh, of jail here, yes, and uh, so it's already two and a half years, and uh, I'm still unable to travel. Can you imagine? Which makes altogether five and high and half year of not being able to travel anywhere. Uh, it's a long piece of time. They, uh, I'm not talking about the private issues because, uh, although it's also quite important because I have some very close 
uh, family members abroad, but I cannot see them. Yeah? Uh, so uh, these are the issues, uh, you know, which are. Uh, I think all the all the situation is designed either to break me psychologically somehow. I don't know to to, to make me commit suicide or something like that. Uh, either to make me get out of the country and never return, because that I mean their goal is that I really go out of here and uh, uh, being afraid that they will put me in jail again, I, I won't come back. I think this is the goal of the system. Uh, of course, I don't have any evidence for that, but uh, all uh, all the the events of uh, of the past uh, years show that uh, this is their real goal. Uh, at least I think so. So uh, for the moment being, we are waiting for uh, the trials, and I hope that uh, I really hope that first and foremost the trials will be made public uh, sooner or later. Uh, secondly, I really hope that uh, uh, the um, uh, trials will uh, be attended by at least some independent journalists uh, from Poland, and not only from Poland. I, I would like to invite all all the friends and comrades from different media, independent media from other countries as well. And third, I really hope to 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 meet you in some time. If uh, if the regime won't find uh, me guilty of something else, for instance, because the Poland, Poland, well, Poland is a country. When I'm talking to you today and tomorrow at six o'clock in the morning, I might be in jail. So we we, we have to be aware of that. Yes, and you are aware of that perfectly, Michal, uh, having having the experience as well. Uh, so. Uh, Let's uh, hope that uh, in some time we could we can meet either uh, in different European countries or even non-European countries, or uh, we can meet in Poland when it is a free country. Because I, I have a lot of friends, you know. By the way, a lot of friends from European uh, from Euro European anti-system uh, movements. Uh, I could name here a, a lot of names, but uh, let's say Rainer Rupp uh, from uh, the German Co uh, Communist Party, a very well-known guy there, uh, who at some time wanted to visit me here, but those people are really afraid even to come to Poland. Can you imagine? I mean, the, the uh, citizens, the, the activists from um, different European countries, including Germany, uh, are are afraid of of traveling here, and uh, I really understand them. I really understand them because it's quite 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 dangerous to be, let's say, on the side of uh, the anti-imperialist, uh, anti-Atlanticist opposition here in Poland, even if you are not a citizen of Poland but of uh, other European country. Okay, thank you, Mac Mateusz. Um, I, I hope that people who are listening to this interview will interest about the situation uh, because one of the um, one of the big crises of the Polish left uh, was that in the time when Mateusz was in prison. Uh, there were totally silence and I am not talking now about the social democracy I am talking about the people who call themselves radical leftists who uh, participated in the anti-war movement and in many many in, in many places they they collaborate with the I don't know with Mateusz personally or with the in the, the same in the same objective and uh, if the the objective of the government was was to make a fear for the leftists, they succeeded because people didn't want it to speak about you publicly. Personally, yes, yes, it's uh, it's it, it's it's not good. But uh, take uh, pub publicly, uh, you you can find the the videos uh, when uh, I don't know. Two, three or four times in the year you you have to you were in the you were in the tribunal and they were the demonstration demonstration of 10 people 10 maybe 15 maybe 20 20 people have courage to defend you in poland 
uh, where the anti-movement were uh, the people who defend this case there are i think thousands but they are afraid to to to, to support you publicly so you know uh, but uh, michael uh, if i may say one word uh, mm -hmm. i would like to uh, publicly thank uh, particularly a group of uh, comrades uh, of polish comrades living in france which means first and foremost you uh, second uh, bruno drweski and third uh, monika karbowska uh, all of you uh, really support me all the time so so i think that the uh, polish uh, left living in france uh, is more aware of uh, what is going on here and what was going on at the time when i was in prison than many of the of the activists of uh, of the left here in the country or perhaps uh, you are not only more conscious but also uh, you have more courage uh, to, 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 to fight in such issues uh, than a lot of those people who are frightened here in Poland. Anyway, uh, thanks for, for your support once, once again. I already thanked you several times in Polish but this time uh, using uh, the possibilities to thank you in English. I'd like to thank you Michal and uh, uh, Bruno, Monika and all other comrades uh, whom uh, I cannot mention here. Uh, there were several of them. They were really supportive. I think that it was the continuing the tradition of the Julian Marchlewski and his organization, the international organization to support the revolutionaries. The most important case, for example, for 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 MOPR, this organization was they defending the anarchist in USA, Sasha and Vanzetti. So it was not that we defend only the communists. No, no, no. They defend everybody who are who are persecuted by the government for any reasons. So thank you. Uh, I, one more time, we have the uh, war in the informational level, in the local level. So uh, spread this information about the case of Mateusz Piskorski because the Polish media were silenced about this or they lying about this so so it is very important to to present uh, uh, this this case in in your countries in your youtube channels in your uh, i i think that mateusz is open to speak with you if you have time so invite him uh, you have to be quickly but because as as mateusz said tomorrow or day after tomorrow he will be arrested one more time Unfortunately, this is the reality. So thank you all and uh, let's keep in touch.